Hey guys, what's up? It's Chad Close here with CD Gaming, and this is part four of our series of how to start making a video game in Unity 3D and really just how to start it and uh, all of the components of making a game. Um, this tutorial, this particular one, we're going to work on shooting our enemy where we left off. Sorry. In the past one, we uh, worked on our movement scripts of our AIs and of us. So that's what we got so far. Uh, one thing I'm going to do real quick is just make uh, things look a little, not better, but uh, more clear. So we're just going to create a material, and we'll just call this one blue. And then we're going to make another one and call that one red. And then we're going to go to our player. We're going to attach the red, and to the blue, we're going to attach... Oh, no, no, no. We want to be blue. We want them to be red. All right. And then in here in this main color, we can just uh, change that to blue. And then the red, we'll just change that to red. So, um, make sure you get the. Oop, we don't want. There we go. So now we just can, uh, you can see a lot better. Alright, so let's work on shooting. And shooting, there's uh, two main ways you can make uh, shooting. You could, potentially, you could. You can make uh, a physical object, you can instantiate an object, like a ball, and then fire it at a certain velocity and see whatever it collides into. What we are going to do is we're going to use a raycast again. Um, it's just going to be a lot more smooth and uh, it works better for collateral damage and we'll be doing collateral damage. So, or hopefully we'll be using and shotgun effects and stuff like that. So, raycast is going to work a lot better. So let's go ahead and we'll just make that in our player move script. And in our move, we can just uh, we can just put it in our move function. It's kind of a it's a um it's gonna be an input. So whenever uh, the user let's see, should we use spacebar or click? We'll just use the mouse button. So we can just quickly look that up. Go ahead and click mouse. I had to check something. Um, input dot get mouse and down. So that's what it is. So we can just go ahead and copy that. So what this function is pretty much saying is if the input dot get mouse button down. So if the mouse button is down, you can also do uh, up. And I believe just nothing, so whenever you're holding it down, it'll be true. Up is the frame that you let go of it, and down is right when you click it down. So we're going to want to do down so it happens right away. Um, it's not going to be like a bow when you charge or anything. The zero indicates the left mouse button. One indicates the right mouse button. And two is a middle click, so I think that's the scroll button. Um, so yeah, so... We're going to use the left mouse button. And whenever the player clicks, for right now, we're just going to call the shoot function. Uh, we'll just call it fire. Fire! Alright, so, function, fire. And wow. Alright. So when we fire, we're going to do a raycast. So the raycast, we're going to see all the hits we get uh, shooting type of thing. Oh, I guess it matters what we're using. So, for a pistol, um, which is going to be our initial gun, we're not going to have collateral on that one. So we can just use a normal raycast. So we can just go up here and do declare variable, and we'll just call it hit, just like we did down here. We can actually just copy this. Alright. And then, we can do if if we'll just copy it. Why am I writing it down? And replace this ray with transform dot position. And our direction is going to be vector three dot forward. No, 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 no. Transform dot forward. I believe that is an actual way to write down a raycast. I really hope so. We'll see if it throws any errors. And I'm right. Look at that. I'm right. All right. So, so.
So when you fire, it's going to send out a raycast. And if the raycast hits anything, it's going to return. Uh, it's going to be true. And then we're going to check if what we hit is an actual enemy, or it could just be a wall. So if, if hit got transform dot tag, we're going to tag all of our enemies, and we're just going to use a default tag that's already made. So if you go ahead and click the enemy, and see right here this tag, we're just going to name it. Uh, we'll just do finish. Uh, I know it isn't the finish or anything. Um, we're also going to make this enemy a prefab by just dragging it into the project. So now, whenever you want more enemies, you can just drag more of these in and it just duplicates them and when you change one of these things you can just go ahead and hit this apply and it changes it to all of those things which is pretty nice um, so we named it finish you can also make your own default tags by going add tag and stuff but we're just gonna make one that's already fine because we can so if the tag is finished we are going to do so much damage so let's go ahead and declare a variable called gun damage and we'll just name it 1.0 for right now and then we are going to get the hit that transform dot we're gonna get a component that we have yet to put on it and the components name is gonna be health alright and we're gonna get the uh, variable called health in the script called health so a little confusing but I'll show you that in a little bit and we're just gonna minus equal to gun damage alright alright so if we go back here you're gonna see an error come up because it's like there's no component called health but well, we're gonna make one we're gonna call create JavaScript and we're just gonna call it health and in here now it's saying health is not a component of health so we're just going to declare health and it's going to be equal to 10.0 make sure you put the point oh on we want to float here and we can just get rid of uh, we can just get rid of all this for right now so it's just going to hold the variable all right so we're going to go ahead and attach our health script to the enemy so you can see we have 10 health so now if it hits something an enemy because it's got a tag of finish, it's going to do so much gun damage. So if we go ahead and play this, and if I have the enemy selected, you can see every time I click, fire, 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 and I hit it, I'm doing damage. Alright, so that's pretty cool. Now he's got negative health. We don't want negative health, we want him to die. So what we can do here is, in our health, we can make our function update that I just deleted. And we can go if health is less than zero, less than or equal to, I guess. Um, if it's less than or equal to, we're just going to destroy game object for right now. Later on, we can do it so it adds points and whatnot. But we're just going to destroy the game object. So now if we go ahead and play this, and I spam. I should yep. There he goes. He dies. So pretty cool. Um, we can work on a death animation and all that stuff later on. Um, one thing to note, uh, when you're shooting, uh, it's kind of lame. Nothing's even coming out. So, let's fix that. There are... Sorry about that, someone came in my room. So there's a couple ways of how you could do like a muzzle flash. Um, you could do a particle system or instantiate a plane with a muscle... Muzzle... Muzzle flash um, image on it, which is what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and get a muzzle flash image. Um, so uh, you go to images. I like this one. It's small. It's pretty simple. Um, you could, you should probably go to the the website and just make sure you're not going to get in trouble if you copy it or anything like that. Um, this one looks fine considering I'm not going to be selling this game or anything like that. It's uh, I can use it. So. Let's just go ahead and uh, copy that. Yeah. Let's save the image in our assets folder. All right, so we'll go ahead and save that. So it's saved. So now we can see it popped up here. Let's just create a folder and call textures. 
as you know, we're naming materials mats. I'm always going to drag all of our material stuff in there. Now we're going to create a new material, and we'll just call this flash. And we're also going to create a game object that's a plane. Um, center it out. Let's just, uh, as you can see, it's huge. So scale this down because it's going to be coming out here. And the Z is going to be want a little bit bigger. Um, let's just play around with this. And we'll assign the flash to it. So if we click flash here, well, we can just drag our texture into that. Um, as you can see, our plane is wrong direction. So we'll rotate that. And there we go. So it's a little better. I'm actually going to go ahead and sh click, right click and then show in Explorer. And I'm going to open this up in Photoshop. And I'm just going to do a little editing because there's a lot of wasted space here. All this black. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, let's see. And I'm just going to crop. Image. Crop. Alright. And then we'll also go into image canvas size. And we're just going to go and do... Looks like I'm going to have to do 512 by 512. And then we can just fill in the back with not that color, black. Alright. And it looks like there's some edges. So we can just go ahead and draw over those real quick. Alright, so go ahead and save that. Come back here and you can save. Save as. Oh, okay. So it saved as the PNG, which I guess is fine. I like using Photoshop files, but that's fine. So as you can see, it's a little bit bigger now. Let's make our Y a little bit, oh, it's not the Y, it's the Z, 0.15, so a little fatter. So that's pretty good. And now we don't want all this black here, so we go into our flash. We're going to change the diffuse. If you click right here, if it comes up, it takes a little bit, a little second. Go to particles and additive, not additive. Um, multiply. Um, and go to the texture and apply from grayscale. Let's see, it's not really what we're trying to go for either. <laughs> Let's see, one second. So what we're actually going to do is we'll see if this works. Um, undo this apply from grayscale, apply that. And then we're just going to use a multiply, and in our Photoshop, we are just going to select all the black and delete it. Whoop! First, um, we'll select everything and copy it, and then we're going to get rid of this black round. And we're just going to delete all the black. And go ahead and save that. And let's save it as a Photoshop. It's not the copy. Muzzle flash, save. And we can go ahead and delete this one. And as you can see, it's, let's see, there we go. It's uh, really quite bright. So, oh my god. Sorry about that. I had to figure it out. Uh, what I did is I quick made a material called ground, darkened up the ground. And then on the flash, I ended up. For some reason, when I saved it as a Photoshop, it made it black and white. So I just uh, undid that, and I deleted all the background. So now I just have this main. It's got some black left in it, but you can't really tell, so it's fine. And then just save that as the PNG. Go ahead and close that out. And then the flash, I used particles, and then additive, and then I darkened it up a little bit. So you can change it um, to make it a little darker. So now, from the view we're going to be at, it's going to be, uh, it's going to look like that, so we can edit it a little more. But for right now, we'll just call this flash. And drag this, so make a prefab, and we're going to create a script real quick called flash. And simply what this is going to do, it's going to have a timer bar. And this is going to be 
equal to time that time. So when pretty much just when it uh, is instantiated, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then if timer is greater or no, no if time dot time is greater than timer plus uh, we'll make it be alive for like 0.3 seconds and then we're going to destroy game object all right and i think i spelled destroy wrong yep all right so go ahead and attach that to flash and then we can apply it and then delete it so now we have our prefab with all of that applied now in our player move script we're going to want to instantiate it a flash so we're going to make a variable called flash prefab and it's going to be a transform and now when we shoot we're going to do um, bar flash equals instantiate Ooh, I'm gonna spell this wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. Go ahead and just look it up real quick. Probably spelled it wrong here too. Yeah, I did. Look at that. I can't spell. Alright, there we go. So that is how you spell it. Don't see it. Capital I. Um. Alright, so now we're gonna put flash prefab, the position, so transform. Oh, we're actually gonna do uh, flash pos dot transform dot position. And then our rotation, we're just gonna go over here and I googled instantiate. And came up with this um so prefab the position and then we're going to do quarterine identity i was not going to attempt to spell that which just sets the rotation so don't worry about that just put that in there so now it's going to instance our flash and we're going to instantiate at our position called flash pos. so we're going to have to go ahead and declare that and then in here we're going to go ahead and make an empty and put attach that to the player and this is going to be our flash pos and go ahead and drag that into our flash position and our flash prefab into our flash prefab so we're going to want to change this position a little bit um it's going to be up and then over and we'll see how that does and go ahead and play this um the rotation, we're going to want it to be our rotation, my bad. So we can just do transform.rotation. See if that works out. Um, looks like it's 90 degrees up phase. So we can just do flash okay. transform.euler angles dot y and then plus equals 90. And then one also thing, we want this to flash every single time. So we're going to cut that out and put it into our fire. So. So it is backwards, um, as you can see. And I think it's kind of staying up a little too long, as you can see. So we're going to make this minus. Another thing we are going to change is in our flash script, we'll make that 0.2. And we also are going to parent this flash to our flash position so it moves with our player so it doesn't like drag like that. And how we're going to do that is just do flash dot, uh, parent equals flash pos dot transform. All right. And now, let's see how that looks. Oh, um, what is it doing? It's just a uh, update mass from shapes. All 
Prepare move. 52, 52. Hmm. I'm positive that it's got to do with uh, me instantiating this flash and parenting it. Because that's the only thing I did. So if we undo that. Yeah. Um. Let's just make it disappear even faster than that. Let's do like 0.1 maybe. And that looks that looks a lot better. Um even slower, really. Also the flash position needs to come back a little bit. set up right now. Alright, um, let's see. So that's looking, okay, um, alright, so now let's work on our health. And how we're going to do that is just we're going to add uh, the health script simply to our player. And then on our enemy's move, we're going to make it so it can attack. So in this check direction, we're also going to check excuse me, our distance. So if math f dot abs dot oh, um, vector 3 dot distance. If I can spell it right. Distance. Um, hopefully that's right. Um, our transform dot position and we also want to do our player dot transform that position. And if that the absolute value, if that is less than, I believe it's already absolute value in the distance, but it's fine. If that is less than, we'll do um we'll just make a variable called attack distance. Alright, and then we got to declare that variable up here, our attack distance. And we'll just do 1.5. Um, I don't know if that's going to be too close or not. Debug. And what this is going to say, it's going to print to the screen. Um, you're getting hit, pretty much. Uh, hit, we'll just call hit. So, if the zombie's close enough, it's going to start yelling out hit. And it looks like I spelled distance wrong. Wow, that's, that's impressive. Looks like it just has to be capital. Maybe that'll work. Yep. All right. So, go ahead and play this out. Click our console, and as you can see, uh, it's getting close enough to hit. Um, and you can see it's pushing it. Well, we don't want it to push. So, if the attack distance is this, we are going to do. Um. We're going to make the direction or hitting. We'll just make a variable called hitting true. Right? And then up here, every time, we're just going to make hitting equals false. And then we'll go bar hitting equals false. And down here in this move, if hitting, we don't want it to move. So if we're not hitting, you can move. So that way, our person doesn't, our zombie doesn't push our zombie. So there we go. So now it's hitting. And as you can see, we can go in here and increase the distance. Maybe two might work a little bit better. Um, yeah, that's that's a good distance. So we'll do two. Um, as you can see, it was kind of just swerving and looking around. So what we can do there is... We want it to look at our player now once it's hitting. So we can do transform dot look at player. Simple enough. I want to transform in here. I don't know if you need it, but so now when our thing is hitting, now it's going to be looking at us. So that's good. And now if we are hitting or we're not moving, we want to hit now, so 
we can go hit make function make that hit now right when it hits it's going to let's see we don't want it to hit every single frame so we're going to want kind of a timer so we will make a variable we can make this hitting variable actually a private variable so we don't see it in the inspector in the inspector so that'll be nice and um, we can do var uh, hit speed and we'll do that say like every 0.5 seconds maybe for this uh, particular zombie and then damage we need and we'll just make that 1.0 again and hit timer equals 0, 0.0 and this is going to be a private bar all right so now in our hit we're going to do hit timer plus equals time dot delta time which is simply the time between each frame now if hit dot timer is greater than our hit speed we want it to hit so first we're going to reset the hit timer and then we want it to hit and how we are going to do that is we can just go over here and copy this damage script over here and change our hit with our player and then the health and instead of gun damage we just named it damage so that should hurt us now um where did i do that line 27 when do we move? 9279. Right there. Alright, so let's go ahead and play this real quick and see if it hurts us. Yeah. So every 5.5 seconds, you can see it's hurting us. So, uh, kill him real quick. Alright. So, I believe. I believe that is going to be it for this tutorial. So, we worked on some health. Um, next time we'll probably do some uh, spawning of the enemies and uh, kind of uh, more of a round base and all that stuff, fun stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe, stay tuned for the series, and I'll see you guys on Thursday.